the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. Today we gather to celebrate the 12th Sunday in the Church's ordinary time, and this evening we pray especially for the repose of the souls of Joe Flannery and Michael and Mary Boyle. We ask the Lord to watch over them as they come to his kingdom and to give consolation and his compassion to all their family and friends left behind. For those who may be watching at another time, the Mass on Sunday morning will be offered for the repose of the soul of Marian Nash, and the half past ten Sunday morning Mass will be offered for all our parishioners. Today, the Church in England and Wales keeps what we refer to as the Day for Life, a day where we particularly focus on prayers on all life issues. The Lord has given us this gift of life and we are invited and called upon to protect it from conception until natural death. And so this year, the church is focusing particularly on the concept of end-of-life care and the protection of all those who are in their closing days, perhaps suffering from particular difficulties, but we resist particularly the call for assisted dying or assisted suicide. So as we come before the Lord to be nourished and fed, we will, be, will listen to his word and to be fed by the bread at the altar. We call to mind our own faults and failings, we ask the Lord to strengthen us, to give us his support, but most particularly his mercy and forgiveness for all our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
a reading from the book of Job. From the heart of the tempest, the Lord gave Job his answer. He said, Who pent up the sea behind closed doors when it leapt in tumultuous out of the womb, when I wrapped it in a robe of mist and made black clouds its swaddling bands? When I marked the bounds it was not to cross and made it fast with a bolted gate. Come thus far, I said, and no farther. Here your proud waves shall break. The word of the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Some sailed to the sea in ships to trade on the mighty waters. These men have seen the Lord's deeds, the wonders he does in the deep. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his great love endures forever. For he spoke, he summoned the gale, tossing the waves of the sea up to heaven and back into the deep. Their soul melted away in their distress. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. All the waves of the sea were hushed. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. They rejoiced because of the calm, and he led them to the haven they desired. Let them thank the Lord for his love, the wonders he does for men. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ overwhelms us when we reflect that if one man has died for all, then all men should be dead. And the reason he died for all was so that living men should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised to life for them. From now onwards, therefore, we do not judge anyone by the standards of the flesh. Even if we did once know Christ in the flesh, that is not how we know him now. And for anyone who is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old creation has gone, and the new one is here. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. A great prophet has appeared among us. God has visited his people. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. With the coming of evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind him, behind they took him just as he was in the boat. And there were other boats with him. Then it began to blow a gale, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that it was almost swamped. But he was in the stern, his head on a cushion, asleep. They woke him and said to him, Master, do you not care? We are going down. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet now, be calm. 
and the wind dropped, and all was calm again. Then he said to them, Why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? They were filled with awe and said to one another, Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. As miracles go, this is a fairly dramatic one, a fairly obvious and uh, spectacular moment for the disciples. I think, almost certainly, this is the first time that I've read this gospel, or the first weekend I've read this gospel in a parish that has real boats in it. That you could literally walk from here down to the quayside and see the boats bobbing in the harbour. I am praying desperately that this weekend we do not have blowing a gale in quite the dramatic way that the gospel has. We don't want anybody swamped at sea today or tomorrow. They have been with other people. Jesus has been teaching and they say it's time to finish. Whether it's an impulsive moment because they say they take Jesus just as he was and they get into the boat and there are other boats. Now, this isn't... Um, this isn't me getting into a boat. I've been in a little rowboat with some youngsters one time, and I got so completely befuddled about which way the oars go, which way, and these youngsters were telling me, no, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. I think we made it back to land, just about safely, and another vow, never again. But these weren't inexperienced people. Several of them were very experienced fishermen, and we're not talking about people with a rod and a line standing on the side of the river. These were working fishermen, taking their boats out before they met Jesus on a regular basis, bringing in large catches. Very experienced, especially in that area and that sea. But nonetheless, they were frightened. When Jesus wakes and speaks to them, why are you frightened, he says to them. We are going down. It's the voice of experience there. This is not, as they say, this is not a drill. It's time to get up, to wake up. Almost, they can almost envisage them signaling to the other boats, looking for them to come and help them out, take them on board as their boat goes down. This was end of life almost for them. The experience they had, the water that was coming in, they knew that there was nothing much more they could do. The likelihood is they were waking Jesus up so that he could either help bail out the water or get ready to jump into the sea and swim for another boat. He calms the wind and the waters drop. Presumably, they are able now to make up and get the water out of the boat so that they won't sink. He asks them, why were you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? How is it you don't trust me, he's saying to them. They are on a journey of discovery. In a moment, in the last line, who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. This is their moment of discovering, and for us too, as St. Mark shares it with us, discovering more about who Jesus was and who Jesus still is for us today. This particular gospel comes in a series of passages 
that really um, points to the authority that Christ has. He performs healing miracles. He casts out devils, casts out demons, and even has control over the water and the wind. Placing this gospel in context, the church gives us that extract, that short extract from the book of Job, when the Lord, the Lord God Almighty, basically in challenging Job, because he's been sort of whinging about his lot in life, says, well, hang on a minute. Who do you think put all the seas in their place? Who said, come thus far and no farther? The Lord God says to Job, I am in control of the water and the wind. And Jesus, in doing, saying and doing this, proves that he is the Son of God and is God incarnate, God among us. It is his authority being shown clearly. They cry out to the Lord in their need, as we hear in the psalm, and rescue, he rescued them from their distress. God is there to help and support us. He sent his son into the world to bring us comfort and consolation and a new and intense way of getting to know God in heaven through his son, Jesus Christ. Who can this be, say the disciples? We too, perhaps, at times in our lives, say, who can this be? We are invited to make the journey with the Lord, to get to know him, to understand little by little, perhaps, who he is for us as well. He has the ultimate authority. But in a sense, we too have to acknowledge that and have faith in him and re reconcile and give ourselves over to that authority in our own lives too. How is it that you have no faith? In times of crisis, in times of distress, perhaps our faith is tested. And as we remember Jesus on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Quoting elsewhere from scripture, even in that moment, he was crying out in his faith. So it's no wonder that we too cry out from time to time. So as we take consolation from the fact that the Lord can calm the storm, can calm the storm of the tempest in our own lives, he also invites us to accompany him still. There will be times when we can say, who can this be? But he always responds by saying, I am your friend, I am your saviour, I am the son of God, and God made man. So with the psalmist, let us also join in and say, oh, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. So let us stand and as a community of believers profess our faith in the Lord, one God above all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day for life, let us place our concerns and prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For all members of the Church, that we may work to build a culture where life in all its vulnerability is cherished and promote authentic compassion in the treatment of those who are dying. Lord, in your mercy. For all politicians in our country, that they be inspired to support high-quality palliative care and resist the call to allow the end of life through assisted suicide. Lord, in your mercy. For those in the final stages of life, that their fears and distress be met with true compassion one which finds expression in treating the dying person with love, with dignity, and the appropriate palliative care. Lord, in your mercy. For all who live in our local area, that we may be faithful to the will of God and always protect human life from conception until its natural end. Lord, in your mercy. Let us ask Our Lady Immaculate to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty Father, we have faith that you hear all our prayers, those spoken aloud and those in the silence of our hearts. Strengthen the gift of faith you have given us, especially when it seems that we may be overwhelmed. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare our altar for the Eucharist, we place our own private prayers and petitions upon the altar. We pray particularly in this Mass for the repose of the souls of Joe Flannery, Michael and Mary Boyle. And as Father's Day approaches, we remember our own fathers and grandfathers and ask the Lord to give them uh, their due reward and to, for those who are still with us to help and strengthen them in their call and their ministry to their children. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. 
It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. So let us stand and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplish the effects, receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make our offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. Yes. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we pray the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon us like the dewfall, so that, we may that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, Paul, his assistant, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. The Blood of Christ. For those who may not be able to join us this evening or at the Mass this week, uh, I'd like to invite you to join in with the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. My Jesus, I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us stand and pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with de constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, just a couple of notices. The uh, newsletter, hopefully you picked it up on your way in. Uh, please give it a read and see if there's anything particularly that is uh, useful to you. Uh, if there's nothing useful to you, read it anyway and uh, don't complain because I'm sure, so sure there's something useful buried away uh, for everybody in the newsletter, even if it's just the mass times for next weekend, which are fortunately the same as this weekend. Uh, the St. Vincent de Paul Society have asked for a little note to go in about their food bank. Uh, there's a box at the back by that door, which you can't see where I'm pointing, on, by the baptistry side back door, um, where they often, in the past, people have given food bank donations. So uh, they're going to, they've asked if they can resume the practice of letting the parish know what particularly they might need uh, in the newsletter in the weeks to come. So if you are uh, willing or have done in the past to donate some food to their food parcel system, uh, the box is uh, gratefully accepting any donations that they may be, decide to give. Um, all fathers are hopefully uh, going to enjoy a good day tomorrow as it's Father's Day. Um, that's fathers, dads, granddads, holy fathers in Rome, uh, and priest fathers in wherever we may be. Uh, in the broadest definition, uh, we give thanks to God for all the good gifts he has helped and gives through uh, the, the ministry and the service of fatherhood in all its shapes and forms. And uh, particularly in this year of St. Joseph, perhaps we think of those who foster or stepfathers who perhaps sometimes just get a little sidelined, but we won't sideline St. Joseph today. Uh, there is a retiring collection today for the Day for Life, which as I've now retired, so to speak, the plastic boxes and brought back the collecting bags, means that on your way out, you're going to have to pay attention to the colours of the bags. The red bags are for the first collection, and the blue bags are for the second collection. Now, if that's not how it used to be, I'm very sorry about that, because I wasn't here when it used to be, but I've been using the red bags for the first collection for the last couple of weeks, and so there are red bags uh, next to the blue bags. Um, so the Lord will provide and help you in, in, to donate in any way that he feels that you should do. So uh, red bags for first and blue bags for second. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.